Hi, hello everyone. Today we are going to see the complete JVM architecture. So, what is JVM? JVM is basically a virtual machine. Virtual machine is a software simulation of a machine which can perform operations just like a physical machine. For example, a calculator in real world and a calculator in PC or mobile. Both are doing the same work but one of them exists physically and the another one exists virtually. In another example, we have driving in real and driving in game in which as you can see both of them are doing the same work but one exists physically and another exists virtually. Virtual machine is of two types hardware based and software based. Hardware based virtual machine provides several logical systems on the same computer with strong isolation from each other. For example KVM that is kernel based virtual machine for Linux systems VMware, Zen and cloud computing. And the main advantage of hardware based virtual machine is effective utilization of hardware resources. Software based or application based virtual machine, this virtual machine acts as a runtime engine to run a particular language. For example, KVM acts as a runtime engine to run Java application, PVM for running scripting languages like Perl and CLR that is common language runtime act as a runtime engine to run .NET based application. So JVM is a virtual machine which act as a runtime engine to run Java applications. JVM is present in JRE which is a part of JDK. JRE is having some tools like Java C which helps to compile the particular .java file to .class file. So here we have a .java file which get compiled to become a .class file. Now we have dot class file which will went through different phases that is class loader subsystem after that memory areas various memory areas and then to the execution engine finally. So here we have complete JVM flow of execution having different phases. So let's get started with class loader subsystem. Class loader subsystem is mainly responsible for three activities. Number one loading, number two linking and number three initialization so loading means leading the dot class file and storing the binary data in the method area for each dot class file jvm will store the following information in the method area that is fully qualified name of the loaded class or interface or enum fully qualified name of its immediate parent class whether the dot class file is related to class interface or enum the modify information variables or field information method information or constant pool information. Every class loader contains three types of class loader. Number one, bootstrap class loader. Number two, extension class loader. And number three, application class loader. In bootstrap class loader, it is responsible to load core Java API. It is implemented in native languages like C and C++. Extension class loader is the class of bootstrap class loader. And the class loader is responsible to load classes from extension class path this class loader is implemented in Java. Application class loader or system class loader, it is a child of extension class loader and the class loader is responsible to load classes from application class path. It internally uses environment variable class path or default workspaces. Application class path is implemented in Java. Class loader subsystem will give high priority for bootstrap class path and then extension followed by application class path. Now let's see how it works. Class loader follows delegation hierarchy principle. Whenever JVM came across a particular file or a class, then it will first check whether the corresponding class is already loaded or not. If already loaded in the method area, then it will use that class and if not loaded, then JVM requests the class loader subsystem to load that particular class, then class loader subsystem hand over the request to application class loader. Application class loader hand over the request to extension class loader and extension class loader hand over the request to bootstrap class loader. Now the bootstrap class loader will check in its corresponding libraries that is in rt.jar and if it is not found that it will pass the request to extension class loader and then extension class loader will search in ext that is the extension path. If in the extension path that particular class is not available then it will hand over the request to application class path. 
where it will check the class file in the class path variable and if at last it is not found then class not found error will be thrown or else the class will be loaded now let's see linking linking consists of three activities verification preparation and resolution verification is a process of ensuring that binary representation of a class is structurally correct or not that is jvm will check whether the dot class file generated by the valid compiler or not or whether the dot class file is properly formatted or not internally bytecode verifier which is a part of class loader subsystem is responsible for this particular activity if the verification fails then we will get runtime exception saying java.lang.verify error preparation phase it is the phase jvm will allocate memory for the class level static variables assigned default values but not the original values like for int 0, for double 0, 0.0 and for boolean it is false. Note original value will be assigned only in the initialization phase. Resolution is the process of replacing symbolic reference used by the loaded type with original references. In initialization phase all static variables will be assigned with original values and static block will be executed from top to bottom and from parent to child. Note that while loading, linking and initialization, if any error occur, then we will get runtime exception saying java.lang.linkage error which is a parent class of verify error. Now let's have a look at different memory areas. Whenever DVM loads and runs a Java program, it needs memory to store several things like bytecode, objects and variables. This memory area organized into five categories that is method area, heap area, stack area, PC register and nitty method stack. In method area, class level binary data including the static variables will be saved. In every JVM, one class area will be there at the time of JVM startup and it can't be accessed by multiple threads simultaneously that is it is not thread safe. Method area is also not a continuous memory. Heap area for each JVM one heap area is available. Heap area will be created at the time of JVM startup. Objects and corresponding instance variables will be stored in the heap area. Stack area. Stack area is a thread based stack and it consists of three ports that is local variable array, operand stack and frame data. Because the data is stored in the stack is available only for a corresponding thread and not available for the remaining thread, hence the data is thread safe. PC register For each thread, a separate PC register will be created at the time of thread creation. PC register contains the address of current executing instruction. Once the instruction execution complete, automatically PC register will be incremented to hold the address of next instruction. Then we have native method stack. All native method stack invoked by the thread will be stored in the corresponding native method stack. Method area, heap area and stack area are considered as important memory area with respect to programmer actually. Method area and heap area are, are per JVM but stack area and PC register and native method stack are per thread. So for each JVM one heap memory and one uh, method area is there but uh, for every thread one stack area, one PC register and one native method stack will be there. In the end, we have execution engine. In execution engine, there are two parts that is interpreter and JIT compiler. These are the main parts. So, execution engine is responsible to execute Java class files and uh, interpreter reads the code line by line. But JIT compiler helps the interpreter to identify the repeated code and the profiler is there which will uh, identify the particular repeated code and then at a particular threshold value it will uh, get saved uh, means that machine code will be saved for future purposes apart from that we have also garbage collector and security manager in the execution engine and there is also a java native interface which will help to identify and to run the java class file to have the native method libraries thank you for watching Please like, comment and subscribe.